Uh, good evening. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to the special meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. It is Monday, April 25th, 2011. Uh, would the clerk please take the roll call? Council Chair Sherman? Here. Council Gouvenali? Here. Council Jordan? Here. Council Lennon? Here. Council Sullivan? Here. Council Swift Chaotic? Here. Here. And Council Walsh? Here. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, town Council reports and correspondence. Jessica. Yes, I'd like to encourage uh, residents of the town to consider um, working with the Thomas Memorial Library Board of Trustees. We have a space and we need an applicant. So applicant applications are being taken, and I hope we'll hear from you. Jessica, is there a deadline for applications? Yes, uh, <laughs> Deb, what is, it's May? Yeah, Friday, May 13th. Fr Friday, May 13th. All right, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Any other reports or correspondence? <laughs> this is uh, the first opportunity on tonight's agenda for citizens to discuss items that are not on the agenda tonight, so if anybody would like to speak to an issue not on the agenda, please come forward to the podium. Okay. <laughs> Seeing none, uh, town manager's report. I'll pass. Thank you. All right. All right thank you. Uh, uh, tonight is a public hearing on the fiscal year 2012 budget. Uh, so if anybody would like to speak on the budget as has been proposed in our materials tonight, please come forward to the podium, uh, identify yourself by name and your address, and uh, please limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> David, thank you. Uh, it's Tom Dunham, 11 Becky's Cove Lane, Cape Elizabeth. <clears throat> I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak briefly to the counselors this evening. Over the course of the past 45 days, I have experienced a respectful dialogue with the Public Works Director and the Town Manager regarding the proposed purchase of a replacement grader. The basis for my inquiry was to determine if the replacement of this capital item truly was necessary given the average annual hours of use of 65 hours and the proposed cost of $140,000. Was this item thoroughly vetted to include subcontracting out <clears throat> to private firms, and what were the assumptions? As many of you are aware, <clears throat> I personally met with five large equipment dealers for new and used road equipment machinery, mm -hmm. and received insightful operational information from four large earth contractors that are fully qualified <clears throat> to bid on the summer and winter greater functions. None of the companies I spoke to could justify this $140,000 expense, given the annual hours of use and the alternatives in the marketplace. In summary, the decision to purchase the greater replacement warrants much further scrutiny. It is my suggestion that the council should hire an experienced outside consultant, well-versed in municipal public work functions, to include staffing, time management, purchase, and utilization of equipment. <clears throat> this process may well validate the current operation or may offer constructive recommendations to enhance operations and in turn provide <clears throat> the higher return on tax dollars spent. It is my suggestion that this item be tabled until further in-depth study. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tom. Would anybody else like to speak? Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Councillors. My name is Dave Griffin. I live at uh, Channel View Road, Cape Elizabeth. I originally planned to come forward tonight to discuss one of the inefficiencies in my mind in the budget. But as this day unfolded, I realized as a taxpayer <coughs> that the budget has already been at the point where it needs to be approved. As the system has been set up in Cape, budgets are first reviewed by the Council's Finance Committee. When completed, they present their findings to the entire Council, at which point the 
council schedules a hearing. Too late, the decision is already made. When only two weeks remaining before the school budget is brought to the council, May 10th is here. The election and voter approval or disapproval of the school budget entails. So here we are at a hearing to nowhere. Keep in mind that the taxpayers are here and not going away. They are energized. When our properties have lost value, our taxes are going up. We have public facilities overbuilt, municipal employees, including the town manager, receiving salaries and benefit increases 13 of the last 15 years. School budget increases, creating need for more taxes, cost increasing, expenditures of 140,000 for a piece of equipment that will be used only 65 hours per year and on and on. As counselors, we taxpayers challenge you to represent us fiduciarily in the future. Thank you. Thank you, David. Would anybody else like to speak? Okay, I will now close the public hearing. Um, we have uh, a number of uh, proposed budgets laid on the materials, and uh, I, I would turn to the finance chair to, to make our first motion, and then we could have discussion. Thank you. Uh, item 72-2011, I move we adopt the uh, municipal portion of the budget for the fiscal year 2012 as set forth in our packets for a total of <coughs> 8 million nine thousand. $119,979. Second. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Jim. Um, yeah, I wonder if the manager could outline the process. Um, you know, I, when I look at the number of hours that uh, we've spent um, reviewing the detail, since this was uh, conceived. And I just think it's important to, to, to make it a matter of record that there has been quite a bit of deliberation over the budget. And there have been interested parties, citizens, participating in the process, but in a very limited way. Um, so I, I just wondered if the manager might be able to reiterate how many meetings we've had and uh, what, what his thoughts are on the process, because I believe it's been as open and as straightforward as one can have in a municipality, and one that I think needs to be on record. Mike, would you go ahead? Yes, I'd be uh, happy to, David. Uh, the, really, the budget process begins almost as soon as one's adopted. Uh, in fact, I, I recall this one actually began in early July of uh, 2010. Uh, Eventually, we go through a process of having overall goals. Uh, the council discusses the budget as part of their goals process in December and in early January. Uh, there's certain guidelines, there's direction set. We look at salary increases or, or no, no increases as we looked at last year. Uh, and the big picture is really set forth uh, in, in February. Uh, in early March, uh, the big picture is, is is then filtered down to individual budgets. Uh, the department heads submit budgets to the town manager, and then I recommend a budget to the town council. In this case, it was on uh, approximately on February 3rd of, of the, excuse me, March 3rd of this year. Uh, meanwhile, the school board is also going through a similar process. Uh, the, the different uh, principals and others who have budgetary responsibility make recommendations to the superintendent. The superintendent recommends a budget, goes to the school board, and then the school board recommends a budget to the council uh, right around the 1st of April. Uh, as, as, while the school board is reviewing the school budget, the municipal budget reviews are ongoing, and the, there, were a couple, there were at least two different evenings uh, initially where you reviewed the, the individual lines, uh, the individual departments in the budget, 
Uh, you also had a meeting with the school department on April 6th. Uh, at all of those meetings, there was opportunity for public comment. Uh, you specifically invited public comment at your meeting on April 11th. Uh, you asked for it to be on the agenda. Uh, and uh, then there's the meeting this evening. The public hearings are also advertised, and uh, you know the, the, public, the budget information is widely distributed on the web and elsewhere. And just echoing Mike's summary, uh, we do recognize in response to uh, Mr. Griffin's comment that it's not a perfect process to have the public hearing at this stage in the game with the uh, school budget validation vote only two weeks away. For that reason, we did invite uh, and made a special point to invite the public to, to provide commentary two weeks ago at our regular meeting as well as at all the various workshops. Um, but we do recognize the issue that you've raised tonight. Are there any other questions or comments? Uh, Caitlin? Yep. Um, I had a question as to how procedurally we would move forward if the council was to table the road grader idea, as Mr. Dunham suggested, while still providing public works with a proper operating budget, if that was to happen. Uh, my understanding of that would be uh, you could offer an amendment uh, to the motion that's been made to remove the grader from the budget. Uh, and then if that amendment were to carry, we would approve the budget without the grader. Uh, but Mike, is there any, is there yeah. another option? The, the grader is actually in the 715 account capital projects, part of the, the $566,000 for all uh, capital projects. I, I don't know if it's possible, uh, Caitlin, to sort of reserve judgment on that Either we have it as part of the budget or we don't, because that affects the, the, the tax rate, et cetera. Well, that's what I was wondering if, I mean, if it is as simple as, you know, tabling it, which it appears not, because then there has to be an, the alternatives that are suggested that would be used for the greater. How would you budget those things and incorporate them into the budget? Uh, Frank? Yeah, I'd just like to respond to that, because, Caitlin, I did, I did look at the analysis that was done um, by Mr. Dunn and his group um, indicating by their analysis that the greater would have been better to rent than to buy, basically. And I found, I personally found a, um, I have a difference of opinion in terms of how the calculations are done because it did not include any inflation for rental rates in the future. Mm -hmm. And if you just include a simple 3% increase per year for rental rates <laughs> is clearly a better option for us, purely from a financial standpoint, purely financial, not anything operational to, to purchase now versus buy. But there are also alternatives as to not even needing the greater altogether. I mean, Route 77 is what the, the main use of the road greater in the winter months anyhow, and Scarborough and South Portland both seem to operate the other ends of Route 77 on either side of us with very little, you know, problems with the road, and they don't have a road grader. They use, I imagine, the dump truck with the plow and, and wings. And so I just, you know, as yes, long term, it does seem like leasing or greater, you know, is not as good an option as buying one. But my proposal, my, my suggestion is that we might not even need a road grader that it seems obsolete from over the course of the last several weeks, I've become more educated on the use of a road grader and that it seems like when we purchased the road grader that the town currently uses, which was well before I was even born, it was very necessary to have a road grader because chemicals weren't needed, chemicals weren't used to break up the ice as they are nowadays. And so it just seems as though perhaps purchasing a new road grader seems like not the best investment for the town if we could do it in other ways. Just all I'm suggesting. And. Um, I would just add that I, I also have, have looked at this issue and I agree with Frank's analysis that I think the, the lack of inflationary um, measures or, or uh, consideration in, in the analysis is a flaw and um, it isn't truly in my opinion a matter of having a greater or not having a greater, it's having a greater or having something else or depending on some other situation. I would remain very concerned about relying on the rental market, especially having no idea, you know, what will happen over the next couple of decades. We're talking about 
the, a useful life of this piece of used equipment in, in decades, not in the short term. And a lot can change then. And I feel when you're relying on rentals for, for something like this, um, you know, it's easy to say we only need it so many hours a year, but when you need it, you really need it, and that's when everybody else needs the rental equipment. And so I, um, I'm with Frank. I think that uh, it's fiscally prudent and uh, it's a sound decision to, to go with buying the used grader that the manager and the uh, public works director have recommended. Caitlin? I just want to comment that I agree with Frank that if I was talking about using a road grader that the inflation rates and the rental rates will change and it would be a good idea to invest now in one but I'm saying that there may be other possibilities out there that have been raised that we don't need a road grader or rent a road grader or lease a road grader altogether that with the you know the current chemicals and salt and everything that is used on roads that what we have a, you know a dump truck with a plow and wings or the other equipment that we seem to have lots of heavy equipment in our public works department would be capable of handling the job is all I'm saying is that we might not need a road grader that it seems obsolete in nowadays public work systems okay Jessica um, I think that um, uh, Caitlin brings up an excellent point. I'm concerned that maybe uh, Councillor Governale may have not considered all the labor costs in purchasing and labor uh, salary, wages, and benefits. Those go up along with inflation and sometimes greater. I'll show you the spreadsheet if you're interested, Jessica. Okay. But I, I think that, I mean, I think the numbers that we've, we've been given by uh, various citizens are frankly quite compelling. I think that. Um, <clears throat> it's worth looking at closely. Um, I know, as I, I mentioned in a workshop, that South Portland does not use a grader on its section of 77. And um, <clears throat> I think that when we have as many citizens as we've had worried about this, that it may, it may be worth a second look. Um, and the other, and I would like to just re reinforce that Yes, uh, inflation goes up, but the costs of everything go up. And I, I don't think that, um, oh, and, and the other point I want to make is, is, is to Councillor Swiftkeat's comment about when you need it, you need it, which of course is true. <laughs> However, that's something you build into a contract, an RFP, or request for proposals. And um, South Portland has such a thing. They have graders <coughs> at parking lots, and they have it in their proposal that when things start to snow, they have two graders available immediately. So it can be done. And so I would like to also reinforce what Councillor Jordan is saying. It, it's a possibility it can be done. If I could make a suggestion, and that would be uh, if either Caitlin or Jessica would be willing to make a, a, a motion to a, or uh, propose an amendment to the motion, and then we could take a vote on that and, and then We're not move the to question that item, though. What's that? It's not included in the item we're voting on now. No. It's further okay. down. Right, Mike? I no, believe it no. is item 72. Yeah. It's one of the lines it's, there. It's, so in, we, it's in item 72. It's, so we should wait till it's we get the last line. Thank you, Dan. Actually, oh, sorry. Yeah. Jeez. I understood that it was part Capital of it. Yeah. Okay, no, but sorry. that would have been a fair point if uh, it were not in there. Um, Caitlin, would you like to? So you'd make an amendment to, would you table the road grader? How would you? I well, my, that? my only suggestion, and then if somebody else has a better idea, is that you would uh, make a motion to remove the proposed $140,000 expenditure for the used grader from line item 715 capital projects. So essentially, this budget would be reduced. That particular line would be reduced by $140,000. Of course, that would impact the overall grant total as well. And did you have and another thought? I just wanted to um, caution that any tabling motions that are made, there's no discussion allowed mm -hmm. on a tabling motion. So I would agree with room. David better to amend by saying remove that. Just a caution because it sort of cuts off discussion. Right. My, my only concern is that if we remove the money that Public Works has clearly set aside for this road grader and the use of it is that the Public Works budget will then be affected because they're going to obviously need to have money to do it in another <coughs> way. And so that's why my initial question was how it affects the rest of the budget because they're going to obviously need some more money in other areas in order to cover the cost of 
having lost their road grader. Right. Well, that's a fair question. Sarah, did you have a thought on that, or just would you like to offer something else? I just wanted to quickly note that I have found over the years that have been on the council that Bob Manley is an incredibly frugal uh, administrator of his department. I don't think he ever buys anything that he doesn't desperately need and sometimes needs for several years before he uh, requests that it be purchased. Um, you know, he's got a lot of Yankee blood in him, and I, I can't imagine that he would be asking for this road grader if he didn't need it. It's just not in his, in his <clears throat> makeup. So I, I feel in the absence of overwhelming information, which I don't think we have. We have two conflicting opinions, really. I don't feel the need to override his request. Um, rather, I feel I think that it's a, a sound uh, fiscal decision to give some, some weight to the, to the person who's in charge of the budget and in charge of the operations and sees at 3 in the morning what they need and what they don't need. So I guess I won't be in favor of uh, an amendment that would strip this, this line item out. And I'm, I'm trying to honor uh, Caitlin's desire to, to bring the issue sort of to a head, and also I appreciate your concern that if we were to remove the 140,000, that you would need to add back in some money to maintain the existing grader that we have. And I was just trying to flip through the 15 pages of emails on this. I know embedded in here somewhere, I thought was Bob Malley's uh, annual maintenance cost for the grader. Um, I, I, at least I thought I saw that in there somewhere. Um, $602. Yeah. $602 per year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're not actually talking about. I mean, I don't know if that number would be bigger given the age of the grader, but I guess we're not talking about a huge swing, Caitlin. But, then, but if you didn't buy it, if you didn't buy it at a rent, there'd be a rental fee, which was calculated, I think, $3,300 or so. Right. That's my concern. Is if you take it out, he's going to the the road still has to be plowed and cleared, and it has to be done. Uh, yeah, I would think that if you were to say $10,000 to sort of place back in, that would more than cover the anticipated costs if we were to have to rent. Go ahead, Ann. Or you could accomplish the same, what I think mm -hmm. is your objective, is to say yes to the total amount of the budget, but you want to prohibit the purchase of a grader. That works for me. Uh, not that I'm suggesting that, but just in an effort to sort of move <coughs> this along. Okay. Jessica. In fact, that's I was going to say the same thing because, in, in, and I also appreciate what Council Jordan is trying to say is that this is a budget item if we take it out, but we still have the greater. We just don't buy a new one. Okay. So Would you like to make that amendment? I will make you an amendment that we prohibit the purchase of the road grader with $140,000 and leave the $140,000 in the budget to be used you know, in another way or. I don't know how you would just leave it in there, but how would somebody like me to reword that? Just prohibit the purchase of the road grader for 140000 Okay. So the, 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 you've made a motion then to amend the motion that's on the table. Is there a second? <coughs> I second. Okay. Any further discussion on the proposed amendment? I have more discussion on the budget itself, but, not, but this is just the okay. amendment. So we, I believe we need to take a vote then on the proposed amendment. All those in favor of the proposed amendment? All those opposed? Okay. So the proposed amendment doesn't carry, but thank you for making the proposal regardless. Uh, Sarah, we still have the motion on the table, and it's been seconded. Do you have further commentary? I just wanted to quickly note that um, I, I guess I wanted to, to differ with the, the assertion that, that, number one, our municipal buildings, I forget the term, are overbuilt, or that somehow this notion that we have far more space than we're utilizing, I, I don't find that to be the case. There may be an occasional room here and there that's not filled with people, as is generally the case in the building, but my observation as I go around is that our buildings are used heavily and uh, the space is necessary. So on that, on that point, I would disagree. And more vehemently, I guess I struggle with the notion that, that, our, that the expectation should be that we bring in 0% increases on taxes every year. Um, as everyone here has noted, costs go up every year. Uh, this Sunday in the New York Times, there was a very interesting graph, which I wish I had ripped out and brought in, 
noting the percentage of increase that things had gone up, and it listed virtually every single thing that you would possibly need in your life, starting with gasoline and fuel, and moving all the way down to many food items and shelter and clothing, and not surprisingly, the graph showed increases on every single one. I think there was one that did not go up, some small, it's like vegetables or something. So I guess in light of that, given that our world or our country is constructed on the concept that costs go up every year, what's, I guess I don't understand the thinking that says that in our town we shouldn't pay the peop our people that work for us enough so that they can adapt to those cost increases. How with a 0% increase and a 0% <coughs> pay raise are they supposed to live in that world that constantly goes up when they don't? Essentially what you're doing is you're giving them pay cuts every year. And I would find that to be not only unfair but highly irresponsible. So I refute the notion that at baseline we should be having 0% every year and anything above that is somehow a failure of our fiscal um, ability. I, I, I think that we actually sometimes hand in exceptionally small tax increases. I think we do as good a job as humanly possible to allow our teachers and our administrator and our staff and all the fine people that work for our town to be able to live and survive and pay their rent and feed their children like the rest of us. So um, I guess I disagree with the people who say that we're not doing our job by, by increasing taxes. Everything else in the world is increasing. Our property taxes have to increase to, to, to reflect that. Any further comments? Uh, Anne? Um, I just wanted to comment on municipal budget. I think that it's um, fiscally prudent. I think it's wise for us to maintain our infrastructure. I also think I know that the um, municipal employees got no raise last year. The manager hasn't had a raise in two years. And um, I also have heard uh, comments that all these people who are upset about the greater or other things. And there, there may be an, a, a few out there, but I went through this afternoon and uh, looked at every single email I've received on the budget this year. And I've only received emails from three people on the greater. Now, they may have people behind them, a number of people behind them, but we have not. I just wanted to um, correct what some may think has been an avalanche of emails about the greater or any other budget issue this year. Uh, I think the, the people that I've run into at uh, IGA and CVS and places like that um, have been um, remarkably sanguine about the budget this year. And uh, I think they understand it's tough and that everybody's doing their best. Um, but I think Sarah's right. It's unrealistic to expect. We can always hope for a 0% increase, and I'm quite fiscally conservative, but I do not believe that every year we can come in with uh, a 0% budget. And when we have made cuts in the past, they have been unpopular with groups of people. When we have cut personnel, like when we cut dispatching personnel a few years ago, there was a great outcry from some of the very same people. So. You can't please everybody most of the time. You can only please some of the people some of the time. But I, I do think um, Councillor Walsh was correct when he said the process has been exhaustive. And uh, I will be supporting the municipal budget. Thank you. Any other? Uh, Jim. David, I, I just want to reiterate the, the fact that the, you know, there are going to be people who disagree that the process is not as robust as it should be. I think ultimately, we get elected as councillors to represent the citizens in our town. And there's a point to which you have to have some respect for the folks that work in this town for us as citizens. And I see a tremendous amount of work going into the detail that gets to us. And I sit in meetings with all of you, and there are questions asked, lots of questions about things that seem very obvious but need to be vetted and they are vetted in a way that I think I, I can walk away with some confidence that we're getting an honest straightforward budget and something that I think all of us in this town live here and have invested 
and wish to continue to live here and have the infrastructure survive for years to come. Uh, I, um, you know, I've met with uh, the group that is particularly interested in this greater uh, question, and uh, I know that they have some serious questions about it. Um, you know, my challenge to them, and I'll be very straightforward about it, where were they when these things were being discussed in open hearings that we held over the last several months? And, you know, to show up in an email while that's one methodology of communicating, I'm not so sure that, you know, putting a face to it wouldn't have been a better approach. At least there would have been um, some dialogue at the early stages rather than hearing about it here the night we're about to vote on it. Um, it's, it's um, again, these are difficult times, and I will tell you that I have watched the council in this town for about 27 years, and I, being part of this one, I feel we're working very hard for the citizens in this town. And um, I, I just, I don't know what else we can do. We gave, gave a 2% raise to people this year. We didn't give them anything last year. The non-union associates in our school department got a raise last year. In the municipal side, they didn't get a raise. And how do you deal with that from a straight face point of view? If you're working with employees, you want them to feel good about what they do and what they do for the town. So, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm supporting the municipal budget and um, I, support, I support the process, I support the people who have delivered it to us, and I can tell you that I'm, uh, I don't roll over over what has been presented to us. I ask tough questions, I ask challenging questions, I keep good notes, I, you know, I challenge the chief of police about overtime and some of the decisions that were made about scheduling and about the, <laughs> about the purchase of a a police car, and uh, I, I, I want you to know that, that I think that we're doing our job as counselors, and um, I believe that this budget is an appropriate one given these times, and one that I think will continue to, to provide for a good, solid infrastructure in Cape Elizabeth and to continue to uh, keep the investment we're all making here a good one. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Any other comments? Uh, yes, Jessica. Um, I, uh, I support much of what has been said. I think we have fabulous <clears throat> municipal employees, and I know some of them on a personal level. Um, and this is very difficult for me. Uh, I'm not going to support the municipal budget because I hear from citizens over the following issues, and they're looking at the fact that many of them being retired and senior that Social Security has not had a raise in two years, um, state employees not in four years. Our municipal employees last year did not get a raise, but that was the first time in 15 years that they did not. And with the rising costs of fuel um, and the, the poor uh, functioning of the stock market, um, this is affecting the retirement, uh, retirement incomes of many of our citizens. I also would like to point out that um, over 50% of the homes in Cape Elizabeth are assessed at under $300,000. So, and also uh, between, um, uh, and also 77% of the revenue of the property tax revenue in Cape Elizabeth comes from homes assessed between one hundred and four hundred thousand dollars. So I'd like to just point out that people of middle and low income, uh, arguably these are um, are are probably least able to to um, digest any tax increase. And I know that ultimately taxes are have to go up now and then. Of course, they do from time to time, but we are still in this great recession. And I personally would like to see, for at least one more year, um, raises just not given, give, because of the reasons I've stated. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. Any other comments? Okay. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor of the motion? And those opposed? The motion carries five to two. Uh, 
Sarah's finance chair, would you be willing to uh, make a motion regarding item 73-2011? I move we approve the Cumberland County assessment for the fiscal year 2012 budget for the a total of uh, $992,047. Second. Thank you. And the motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion, comments, questions? Okay. All those in favor of the motion? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, Sarah, I'll just keep turning to you if that's all right. I move we approve the local homestead exemption funds for fiscal year 2012 budget in the amount of 173000 I second. Thank you. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, Sarah? Item 75, 2011. I move we approve the community service special funds budget um, for a total of $186,993. Okay. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Sarah? Uh, item 76, I move we approve the property tax levy limit um, as set forth in our packet uh, in accordance with Title 30-A MRSA Section 5721-A for a total of $5,539,079. Uh, I second. It's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Thank you. Item 77-2011. Jim. Um, I uh, asked the chair to ask the council to consider my request to be recused from the following item. Um, my wife is an employee of the school department, and um, I believe that, um, that uh, you know, I have a I have some relationship to this budget item in that way, and I would ask the council to consider my recusal. Uh, we, I believe we would need a motion then, and I move that the council accept Councillor Walsh, Walsh's request to recuse himself, although I think he uh, could be fair in making this decision. I think the appearance is such that he is wise to recuse himself. I second. Thank you. Motion's been made and seconded. Sarah. Um, I think given that we have no jurisdiction over individual line items in the budget and no say whatsoever in salary setting, uh, it's, un it's, it's, it's hmm. unnecessary. Did you, Frank, did you have your hand up? No. no. Uh, Jim, I am just trying to remember, and maybe I'm putting you on the spot, but last year. I did. I asked did, for a recusal. You did ask for a recusal? Well. And did we honor that request? Mm -hmm. Yes, you did. Okay. I, I just couldn't. Even though, even though Sarah had the exact same opinion. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. All right, I mean, my Look, tendency. I, I think it's the appearance issue, which is what Ian has stated in no uncertain terms. I mean, that's, I, I just, I think it's clean to, you know, let the council make its decision. <laughs> okay. Did, and did somebody second your motion? I did. Just, okay, thank you. Any further discussion? All, right, all those in, the, in favor of the motion? All right, motion carries. Okay, so item 77-2011, the school budget. Uh, Sarah, would you be willing to make a motion? Um, yes. Is the council okay if I take everything together? Uh, give I think the, that's... Give the total. Can you be specific, please? What I'd like to do is... is Make a, make a motion that includes all these items on the next couple of pages to just give the bottom line for the whole, whole total of the school budget. The ones numbered one through eight, you mean? Yeah. In our packet. I, Correct. I think that would be fine. Jessica, did you have a question about that? Yeah. Could you, just, could you just please, for the record, give the specific item numbers just so I'm not confused? Um, I don't understand what you mean. Item number 77. It's on all item 77? I'm sorry. I'd like to take item number 77-2011 in its entirety under one motion. I apologize. And those would be the sub numbers one right. through eight. On the it's just that when she said the next couple of pages. I'm sorry. Some other... I was very unclear. <laughs> okay. No, fair enough. All right. Uh, 
So, sir, I think you've gotten the green light for that. Okay. I move we approve the school budget for fiscal year 2012 as set forth in our packets, uh, subject to a public vote for a total of $21,124,690. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Jessica. <laughs> yes. I'm sure this will come as no surprise to most people here, but um, I, I will not be, feel I can support the school budget, and it's uh, because of raises, and I, it has to do with my general feeling about raises in this economy, although I would like to say how very, um, how very impressed I was and pleased at, at the uh, process this year and and I I just really feel as for the other reasons I've mentioned with having to do with our economy at large um, and the teachers in this last three year um, cycle had an aggregate close to 17 percent raise and so I I feel that again for the reasons I've already stated that we should hold the line on all raises this year thank you Jessica any other comments Sarah I'd like to just thank um, all the people who had to do with the school budget and worked incredibly hard to make it look so easy. Um, sitting here in front of us, John Christie, Mary Townsend, Ken Murphy, and Pauline, and in addition, um, all of the, the, the members of the district leadership team, um, and of course, all the faculty and staff who weighed in and uh, were so helpful. So thank you to all of you. It was a great year. Um, I think people felt that it was simple and straightforward and easy to understand and um, very, very fair. And thank you, of course, to the, to the teachers for taking, for agreeing to a um, three-year contract that enabled this budget to be what it is and for the, the impact on the taxes to be as low as it is. Anne. Um, I uh, will be supporting the school budget. I do so. Uh, unreservedly, I think this, the, uh, not only the process was good this year, but the result was good this year. A lot of times people, when they don't get the result they want, they say the process is bad, but I think both, both were good. It's not ideal. I mean, I'd love it for the citizens' sake, including my own sake as a property taxpayer, if we could have 0% on the entire budget municipal county, which went up, and we didn't get any say about that. Um, and uh, community services and school. But uh, I think the uh, school board and in particular the superintendent are to be commended for not just their process but uh, their result. I think they and all the faculty and staff members deserve a lot of credit. And, and, and Pauline, she uh, is the one who answers a lot of my questions when I have questions. But I do sincerely want to thank you, and I, I speak as someone who has not been able to vote for the school budget the last couple of years, and I am happy to vote for it, and I think it is fiscally prudent and uh, a good deal. So I encourage people to go to the polls on May 10th and to vote whatever they think, but I will be voting for it. Thank you. Any other comments? I would just, Frank. just want to um, emphasize um, Ann's point about May 10th, very important that as many people as possible to participate in this vote. We have the opportunity to have our voices heard, and um, I think it's important for us to take that, take that opportunity. And, and I likewise want to echo the comments of my fellow counselors. I really appreciate the incredible amount of hard work that went into this budget process from the, the school board members, the school superintendent, all the members of the district leadership team. You are to really be commended. Thank you uh, uh, for, uh, for on my behalf as a, a member of the council as well as a citizen, uh, it's greatly appreciated. Um, oh, Haley. Sorry. Well, I don't want to be the only one up here not to say <laughs> thank you, so thank you to all of you as well. Okay. Does everybody have their say? All right. Uh, all those in favor of the motion? And those opposed? Okay, the motion does carry. Thank you. We are now up to uh, 78, thank you, item 78-2011. Uh, Sarah, can I turn it back to you for a motion? 
Sorry, I haven't gotten this far. Um, I move <coughs> that. Um, should I? Do I have to legally read this? Call? Overall adoption of the budget as presented. I move that we adopt the overall budget as presented, having had the uh, public hearing on Monday, April 25th, 2011, um, for approval and to set the to approve as well the school budget and set it for a vote, uh, a citizen referendum on May 10th. Okay. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I just, yes. I just wanted to say one brief thing. There was a lot of discussion when the municipal budget was reviewing about what the tax rate increase was, and no one's actually stated what it might be. And I think that's important. Uh, uh, the, the municipal budget increases uh, would increase the tax rate 1.2 percent. The overall tax increase would increase 2.4 percent under this proposed budget. However, this, these will not actually be the tax rate increases. They'll be based on the new valuation uh, following the revaluation uh, that will be taking place soon. But the, the overall tax increase as a result of this budget is 2.4 percent. Okay. Thank you, Mike. <coughs> Any other comments, questions, discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? <coughs> Six to one. Thank you. <coughs> All right. We have uh, items 79 through 86, and the suggestion is that we Consider all of those in one block. Do I have a motion? Sarah. Uh, I move we approve the following uh, budget for fiscal year 2012, uh, all in Cape Elizabeth, the Rescue Fund budget, the Sewer Fund budget, the Spurling Church Fund budget, the Riverside Cemetery, Portland Headlights, uh, Infrastructure Improvement, Thomas Jordan Fund, and the Fire and Police Fund. Seconded. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, this is the uh, second opportunity tonight for citizens who are interested to discuss an item that's not on the agenda. If you have any interest in doing that, please come to the podium and we'd be happy to hear from you. Okay. Seeing none. Uh, before we uh, go into an executive session and adjourn, our next town council meeting is, is the second Monday in May. Okay. Although th there may have to be a special meeting sometime around that same time period. I'm not sure when. Uh, we're going to be refinancing some debt to save a couple hundred thousand dollars. And I'm not too sure when we're going to get the draft resolutions necessary to do that. So. Okay. So that so there could be, so stay tuned. There could be a meeting simply for that single purpose. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, item 87-2011. Do we have a motion? Uh, Jessica. I, I move that we uh, close the open meeting and proceed to executive session. And that in conformance with Title I, MRSA, Section 405-6C? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Second. All right. Thank you. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor of the motion? Okay. Thank you. The motion carries. Uh, so we will be going off the air. We will come back out to it officially adjourn the meeting, but that will not be done on the air. Thank you. Thank you.